The climate control systems in modern vehicles can be a bit overwhelming. Auto, road, temperature, what does this all mean? And for you hypermilers, why does the air conditioning keep turning itself on? If you're having a hard time understanding the climate controls in your vehicle or what they control, don't feel bad. Modern vehicles have immensely more complicated climate control systems than we even have in our homes. To help us understand our vehicle's climate control system, we're gonna take a step back and look at a simpler system first, one without automatic controls. And we've got four basic controls here. The first one is our fan speed. So this is pretty simple to understand. There's a fan under the dash that moves air around the vehicles to different parts. And this is simply controlling the speed of that fan blade as it's going. The next control we have with air is where we're taking the air from. By default, our vehicle's climate control system is taking air from outside the vehicle up in the cowl area. We can change that to take air from inside the vehicle with this button, the recirculate button. And then it pulls air from below the dash and recycles air within the vehicle. The next main control on the air side is our vent selector. So this controls where the air is directed in the vehicle. Pretty simple. It's moving dampers in below the dash after the fan to change the route at which the air takes so we can get it blowing up in our face or down by our feet. The next control is our temperature of the air. So for this system, our air temperature is controlled by two main components. One is the heater core that's taking coolant from the engine and passing it through a heat exchanger that our air is passing through. That is at a pretty constant temperature around 200 degrees. Once the vehicle is warmed up, the temperature of that coolant does not change very much. This selector is controlling what percentage of air passes by that heater core. If we have it all the way down on cold with the air conditioning off, we're taking air from outside the vehicle and bypassing the heater core completely and just bringing it into the cabin. And of course, if we go all the way hot, the system is directing 100% of that air past the heater core and into the cabin of the vehicle, heating it up as much as possible. So if our vehicle has air conditioning, we can turn it on with this button here. What that does is it engages the compressor that's part of the engine assembly and starts to circulate refrigerant through the system. When we go to defrosting, it automatically turns on the air conditioning. So part of defrost is not only to warm the air up that's being blown on the windshield, it's also to dehumidify it. And when we cool air down, it loses its capability to hold moisture. So the moisture comes out of the air and then we direct it past the heater core to heat it back up. And that's how you get defrosted air. That's one of the reasons our air conditioning turns on without us pressing the button. We're back to our automatic climate control system, and this is significantly more complicated because when we put it in auto, a computer takes over handling the control of the knobs, basically. It's controlling fan speed, it's controlling how much air gets passed through the heater core, whether or not the air conditioner turns on and off, and where to direct the air within inside the cabin temperature sensors inside the cabin that are monitoring where we're at and comparing that value to what we set it at with our selector switches. So the first thing is determining do I have to heat or do I have to cool the air? That controls where I'm going to pass the air by the heater core or not and then also where to direct the air inside the cabin. So if we're heating the air and it's cold, we're going to get the heat from the foot wells, and then we're also going to have some defrost mode automatically dictated. The next thing it's going to look at is how far are we off. So if it's 40 degrees inside the cabin and I want it to be 68, it's going to pass 100% of that air through the heater core and make it as hot as possible. And then it's also going to turn the fan up as hot as possible to try to ramp us up as quickly as possible to the 68 degrees. 
68 degrees is not the temperature of the air that it's going to deliver out of the vents. It's controlling to that temperature, so it's going to try to get us there as quickly as possible. Once we get within a couple degrees of the 68, the fan speed will drop down. It will start directing less air past that heater core so we're not getting as hot of air out of the vents and try to maintain a cabin temperature of 68 degrees. It's following predetermined programming in the computer. It's got different set points for the fan and different amounts uh, of air that it directs past the heater core. So pretty interesting stuff. This again is not the temperature that's coming out of the vents. It's controlling to that temperature. More like th setting the thermostat in your house. The, the temperature of that heater core does not change so it's just changing how much air goes past it and then gets mixed into the system. So when we need to air condition the vehicle it does the same exact thing. It has pre-programmed fan speeds and amount of blend in the air temperature based on how far away we are from the 68 degrees. If we're 20 degrees higher it's going to ramp the fan speed up uh, very high cool us down as quickly as possible. Also when we're in air conditioning mode typically you have the air coming out predominantly of the vents uh, because cold air tends to, to fall in the vehicle so we want to send it up high and let it fall down. The same reason heat comes out of the footwell because it rises so it comes down there and then will automatically rise into the top part of the vehicle. So the one thing I don't like and is a little bit confusing to some people is our air conditioner light will not come on when we've got auto mode selected. So it's doing all of that behind the scenes. This will come on and off, air will recirculate and it's all based on the programming of the climate control system. But this is happening when you are in auto mode, it just doesn't tell you. This will happen in heat mode even and as I said, that's because some of that air is being directed to defrost the windshield and keep our windows from freezing up. To do that, it needs to reduce the humidity in the air. And the only way to do that is to pass that air first past a cold condenser, drop that humidity out, and then send it past the heater core. So we're doing a little bit of both. The best way to know if your air conditioning is on when you're in auto mode is to turn it off and you will see the light will automatically come on if the air conditioning was on at the time you turned it off here. When you are in auto mode, the majority of time the programming is going to call for your compressor to be on, your air conditioning to be active to dehumidify the air within the cabin. So the only way to ensure if you are trying to hypermile or put less hours on your compressor for some reason is to leave it out of auto mode and to control your air conditioning on or off with this button. Note, if you do select defrost even, even if you're not in auto, if you go defrost front, most of the time that will also automatically turn your air conditioning on. I hope that provided a little bit deeper understanding of your climate control system, specifically your automatic climate control system in your vehicle. And the next time you're on a road trip arguing with the person sitting next to you about what the auto control is doing, you've got a better chance of winning that conversation. Although, can we ever win? If you found some value in that video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, throw some ideas down in the comments section or ask any questions that you might have. Thanks for watching. Adios.